What's going on? Welcome to Classy Tacos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I am in the middle right now of doing the East Coast Gear Supply front diff. Um, but since I have to remove so much of the front end, we're going to go ahead and throw in our uh, gusseted spindles. These are all pro gussets. They were welded up by RC Fabrication. Uh, make sure you check them out on Instagram. The guy does great welds. So what's going to happen is you order a set from him. You'll get a set that's been sandblasted, uh, welded, painted with uh, steel it. Um, and then you'll get a uh, Annie C's pen, which is nice. I like having these. Um, but yeah, basically just makes it uh, much stronger. If you look, this is what, you know, the stock one looks like. I always felt like it looked really weak. Um, and obviously you can tell where all the gussets are welded. I'm in the middle of doing uh, the diff, so that's why I decided to do all this. I already have one side on with a new hub. Just real quick before I throw you on the bench, let me show you what they look like on with new hubs. So here is what you're going to be left with. That's what it looks like um, with the new hubs. I have it sitting here because I have the axle shaft removed, so I haven't put any of this in. But what I did do, the reason why I did this is I needed to test fit this with the clearance um, on the inside of my wheels. So one thing to note, if you have stock wheels, these uh, gussets might not fit because they kind of come out a little bit. So you're going to need some type of backspacing. I'm on negative 12, um, and that was enough to clear all of this, which is why I went through all of this right now while I'm doing the diff, is just to make sure that they clear, and that way they're done. But you can see how much stronger and how beefy they are in the welds. Um, this entire area is welded up here, along with this added gusset down in here that's been welded. So it should give you a bunch of strength. Um, and then you're kind of prepared for jumps. So let's go on the bench real quick and I'll show you what they look like up close. All right, so up on the bench, you can definitely see the difference right here. Um, and what's gonna happen is I'm gonna take my old one and uh, send it back to him and then he will prepare this one for somebody else. So a couple things that you do have to work on here, there's a mount right here for uh, the wire that connects to your ABS sensor and then the actual sensor is here. So you're gonna end up pretty much removing everything from here and then kind of putting it back onto this one. Um, and you can see this is just a stock one, so it's gonna have the same mounts right here along with the same mount right here. Um, this is gonna go to your lower control arm. These right here are for your calipers. And then this is for the tie rod end on the steering, so. It is a bit of a, it is some work to get this all done. It's even more work because I'm doing it at the same time that I'm putting in the new diff, but it's just better to knock this out all at once. So what I'm going to do, since I already did the passenger side, I'm going to run you guys through doing this on the, on the driver's side, and we will kind of get all the connections in so you can see what that's like. And that way I'll wrap up this and then move on over to the diff. All right, let's go on that driver's side and get this installed. All right, driver's side. I'm not going to put you through the struggle of watching me beat the crap out of this thing. I hate this thing. Anyways, that's done. So first thing we're going to do is get this cotter pin off. The exact name for this, I don't know. I think it's like a Casso nut retainer clip pin something. We're going to save that. So this is a 35, so just make sure you're ready. So right here, I'm just removing the tie rod end, and I do recommend having a tie rod end puller because sometimes these can get kind of tough. All right, so now we got this guy off. We're gonna come back here and just get these um, brackets that hold the ABS line in. There we go. There's another one tucked like back in here. That's also a 12. It's a little difficult to get into, but to show you, it's right here. 12 in here too. Kind of hold the bracket that runs the wiring for the ABS line. So we're going to put this, I'm just going to hold this one right here for a second. I want to put it back there. But before we can move, there's the bracket, right? Because this is going to get transferred over to our new spindle. I want to remove the ABS connection from right here. Um, I need like a tiny little screwdriver. If you, um, if you have a pick like this too, this will work. Because the connection, there's like a little clip that you kind of pop that up and then just kind of pull straight out and it pops out. So this entire harness is going to get bolted onto the new setup, right? So right now, basically this whole harness is just going to hang out of here for a second. 
Um, next up, we're going to remove the caliper. Just make sure when you remove the caliper, you do hang it up with something. Don't just let it hang down under its own weight. So now that the caliper is supported, we're going to do our best uh, to remove the disc. Uh, sometimes these can be a little rough, so just if you have some screws that fit, we're going to get and use those. So let's see how good the, the brake comes off. Let's see. Sometimes it's real nice, most of the time it's not. So instead of fighting it for 20 minutes, just go ahead and find some bolts that fit in these holes. You know, take your time uh, threading these in. A lot of rust and stuff in there, so just be easy with it. And all we're gonna do now is start turning them, um, going back and forth. You start hearing it, there you go. Once you start hearing that noise, it's going to come soon here. There it is. It's off. Take the bolts off so you don't forget. So that's just a lot easier than trying to fight it. Um, up next is going to be the same thing here. We're going to try to fight these. Um, these are 17s. This is why you want to leave some stuff attached here because it's the only force you're going to be able to get on these. It's through one of these wrenches. So it's not great, but we'll do what we got to do. I do recommend here using a little bit of PP Blaster. If you have any, does it actually help? Who knows, but I like it. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, this is a pain in the ass getting these little bolts out. Alright, there we go. Make sure you get that seal off. Perfect. Yeah, you can see where the rust is creeping into here, so it was about time I did this anyways. So this is the, one of the sensors that you're going to move on to the new ones. Um, everything else here looks pretty good. We can uh, go ahead and pop these bottom ones off and that way. And then we have this left and we're good to put the new one back on. So now uh, the only thing really you know, holding our uh, spindle in is this upper one here. So we're going to pop that one up next. That was unexpected. Popped off nicely. And now the whole spindle. Yeah, don't forget, this is a little washer that comes into here. So when we reinstall it, just don't forget this. I usually put it right on that screw right there. I know where that is. And then I will just work this right here so that I know where that is. So right now, everything is good to go. We're ready to. Uh, move stuff over to the new spindle uh, so what i'm going to do is just uh pop off that housing for the abs sensor so that's off there it is right here just going to a couple taps make sure it's nice and clean and we're going to just transfer it over to the new one so this is the bolts right here that holds your uh, brake line bracket, and that's for your sway bar. So we're gonna put this one in here just so that it's ready to go. And then also go ahead and take both of these, which are right here and right here. And that is for your caliper. So we're just gonna throw those in here so that they're already here. All right, so a couple of good wax, and this guy is free. I just want to make sure you guys understand I'm only doing this because I'm in the middle of the diff install. You would not have to remove your axle to do the spindles. I had to just to get ready to remove the diff. So what we're going to do now is just start getting this ready. So first thing we're going to do is throw this guy up in here. 
before that, we're not going to forget to put our spacer on here. It comes with the camera kit. And get this going here. I'm going to turn this to the side here just to give you some access to this. Alright, now. And we're gonna do a point where you're not gonna be able to get it anymore. So what we're going to do is attach it to the lower control arm. Right. Now you got those in fairly tight and you're gonna hit the stopping point right here, which is what I wanted to do. We're going to just really crank down on that top one now. It is a little difficult because you know you have to get in underneath here, but it can be done. Okay, I'm just trying to find a spot for the cotter pin right now. Now, since we're going to loosen it up a little bit, we want to just throw this on here. You don't have to tighten it down just yet. Just uh, throw this on here. Um, Be able to give you some leverage for you know going the opposite way. Alright. I'm trying to see where my holes are. So with the kit, it does make it a little difficult to kind of see where the hole is for the cotter pin. So that's what you see me doing, kind of going back and forth trying to figure it out. I think it's like right behind this one right here so we're gonna have to go a little harder with the turn so let's see if i can get us a little turn one or two more turns so since it's a little tight in there what you're gonna do is try to reach in from the back end and just kind of bend it down there we go just like that and pretty simple just stick the normal you know the normal stuff split them it's just going to be a little more difficult because of the dust okay. nothing that we can't do so this is pretty much set up how we're going to leave it um just like this i'll get the brackets in after um in terms of here now, we're going to go ahead and get um, our hub on. So we're going to get the new hub in um, and the new seal in. So let me go get the hub and the seal. So the first thing I'm going to do is just get a little lube. Just throw some on here. Nice and easy. Don't get it on the ABS connector. Just throw that on like that. This will help kind of slide it in a little bit here. I'm going to do the same thing with the seal. Just going to get a little lube on it. This seal goes on this side right here. You just kind of you know, should be able to find a little spot and just pop that right in. All right, so gently got the seal in. We're just kind of just tapping it into place uh, nicely. Just want to make sure it sits evenly um sometimes it's a pretty tight feel uh some sometimes it's not sometimes it'll just kind of slide in uh these are pretty tight use like a soft hammer don't use like a, a hard hammer because you don't want to you know dent that up or anything let me get some gloves on and we'll uh throw the hub on so just uh in preparation for the hub you're gonna want to just throw this on um you don't have to tighten anything down just yet but just throw it on that way um you can, it just gives you a little bit more leverage because we're going to have to bolt some stuff down here. Try to find a good spot for you where we're not in the way. Let's go this way. There we go. So, you see, the caliper... would be sitting right here. So when you throw this on, you have to put this on before the hub. If you want to give it a good cleaning, give it a good cleaning. I don't care. Um, it's going to sit right here. So the caliper sits here. There's only kind of one way to do this. So, But this has to go in before you throw the hub on, all right? Well, 
also a quick note on the hubs here um, to make sure that it has this uh, kind of o-ring is sitting in there sometimes they don't come attached to it so make sure that's it and then if it doesn't have any Loctite here if you got red you can put red I'm gonna put blue that's what I got Loctite is on it's not pretty but it's there we're gonna take this throw this over here get our bolts through it and then do our best here to line this up. It is a bit of a struggle here. There's just no easy way to make sure that you're in the hole, but you can make sure that the hub is where it needs to be. And then you just kind of start trying to tighten one down by hand. Nice and easy. It looks like that one is pretty close. Not really. Don't do that. So I have to stay right here. I made an enormous rookie mistake. Um, after it fell down, I put the dust shield on the wrong way. Uh, you see that sticker? It should be facing to the inside. Um, and then I did not notice it until I tried to put the disc back on much later, you know, which caused a ton of cursing and me getting really pissed off because I had to remove the whole hub, which takes forever, then put it back on the dust shield right. So just don't do that. So now getting these axles in, sometimes it's not easy. I like to kind of flop around, so you just want to get a straight shot right in, basically. So I'm going to take a good look here. Look nice and clean. No real issues going on there, so we're just going to take it, put it right in through here. That is sitting there. What well, we're going to try to do is kind of just hold it as straight as possible, which is a little difficult. Because the same time, the same way that to get it out, you know, you're gonna, we're fighting that little clip again to get it back in. So, so right here, I'm just throwing the nut on so I can uh, kind of hammer it in with a bit of a heavier hammer. This hammer is metal, so that's why I wasn't using um, the nut when I was doing it with the dead blow. But if you're gonna use a strong hammer, make sure you put that nut on to protect those threads. So we're trying to hold it as straight as I can, and I'm pushing in on this way, like this. And that way, you get it nice and easy in, and you don't ruin any of the threads. There you go. Boom. So up next is just kind of working this through the spindle and the hub. Um, sometimes it's real easy, sometimes it's not so easy. But since we have kind of the spindle taken apart here, you can kind of lift up a little, kind of play with it, and get it right in there like that. Uh, I did want to lube this up real quick. So let me get some lube. Just lube up in where the threads are. You guys see that okay? Yeah, so I'm going to lube up right in here where the threads are. Perfect. And now, we just want to make sure that we get another in. There we go. Just like that. Um, you can go ahead right now and throw your nut on so that it's here. And you don't have to tighten anything down just yet because we're going to work on doing the uh, lower spindle bolts down here. So mine are a little different because. I have the Dirt King lower control arms, but it's basically the same. I just have a washer, um, and I want to say the torque is like 125. I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Something around there. So these get Loctite, is blue Loctite. Just want to make sure you guys know that. So right here, we're almost wrapped up on the driver's side. I'm going to jump over to the passenger side and finish up the brakes there because I just didn't like the way the video was looking with the sun coming in. So I'll get you a clear shot over on the passenger side. All right, so here we are on the passenger side now. You can see it just looks way better than the other side. 
Um, I already have the axle in. Now we're just going to work through getting the spindle done, everything tied in, upper and lower arms, and then getting the brakes on because there's a little bit of adjustment that you need to do for one of the brackets that holds the ABS sensor. So we'll walk through that. Um, I just wanted to get you a better video um, on this side. We're just going to keep working through. We're going to get the brakes on, um, button up the axle, and just take it from there. All right, just push the axles uh, through the hub. Just going to start up here on the lower control alarm bolts and we're going to put blue Loctite on those. All right, so before you get those too tight, I do recommend throwing this one in while you still have a little bit of room to play. Um, you, know, you don't have to, uh, don't, you don't have to tighten it down yet. Just get it in there. So right here, I'm just putting down the axle nut, getting it ready so we can keep moving. So right here, I'm hammering the old cotter pin just to straighten it out. I'll be the first one to say, if you have a new one, use it. Uh, this one wasn't in bad shape, so I'm reusing it. I had a case of them. Um, none of them were big enough to for me to feel comfortable putting it through here, so that's why I reused the old one. Yeah, this bad boy. I ended up those like a small hole in it that I guess someone before me did, so I ended up just uh, filling it. It was more like a little gash thing. So filled it with uh, crazy glue. And we're gonna just put a little bit of grease in here so that it helps keep, keep the water out. So I'm not sure how good it's coming out here on video, but I just wanna let you guys know these uh, dust shields took a good amount of beating for everything to fit in there, right? All right, so up next is we're gonna get the calipers on. And then we'll work through those mounts in the back. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to put the calipers on a stool here, um, kind of raise it up a little bit, let you give you some time to work it in. That way you can kind of open them up a little bit, um, get those going, and we'll do all the brackets in the back, torque spec, everything here. All right, so here we go, just uh, moving along, getting the calipers in. Um, there's a specific tool that you can use to move the brake pads. I don't have that, I just use a regular old wood clamp. You just want to make sure they're nice and tight. Last time, when I pulled them off, it didn't seem like they were torqued that high. Um, so let me get you around on this end here. So you guys can uh, see this here because what I'm going to do now is we have to get this bracket onto this spot here. Um, but if you look, the gussets kind of stick out a little bit more than the stock ones, right? So how we're going to do this is we're just going to get this started here a little. Just make sure you get it in there nice and straight. All right, so get that kind of started like this, right? And then here, we're going to hammer it right here. Um, so that's your ABS line. Um, it's protected by this piece. This is your kind of soft line. Mine are braided stainless steel because I have extended ones. So, you know, just don't hit the ABS or the brake line you're aiming for right here, which will really just kind of bend this out just a little bit. Let me show you what I mean. So we're aiming for... Right there. So right here, just a little bit of back and forth, putting the screw in, kind of letting the screw put some pressure on the bracket, and then coming back in with the hammer little by little, just making sure you're always hitting that spot up until you get that clip in the hole where it needs to be. That's pretty much what I did, and it ended up working out for me. So once we got that bracket in, we're going to slide over to the front and do our ABS sensor brackets and just tighten everything up. So right in here, um, there's a bolt that goes, this is a 12 millimeter. It just holds this bracket for the ABS line. 
So just make sure you bolt this in when you're tightening this up. Pull the bracket up. Don't let it sit on the axle shaft. Um, and then, you know, go ahead and plug in your ABS sensor. And then here, just hammer down on this one. It's a 19. Make sure you put your cotter pen in. Um, call it a day. So right now, um, this side is, is pretty good. Um, everything is in where it's supposed to be. Basically, we can just throw the tire back up on this one. Before I throw the tires on, though, I'm going to, it's time for me to rotate. So I'm just going to switch out the tires real quick. I'm going to fill the diff. Um, I'm not going to make you guys watch that because that's a pain in the ass. So. so just like that, we're done. I'm coming back at you a week after I finished the front and the rear diff along with the spindles. So it's been about a week of driving. I don't want to get into too much with the 529 because I'm going to do a full follow-up video on that and kind of the driving differences and highway, RPMs, all that type of stuff. So in terms of just the spindles, they have worked out great. I haven't noticed a change from stock at all, which is exactly what I wanted. But one thing that I didn't go over in the video was once you, you know, return back your spindles, RC is going to look them over and then you're going to get back a core charge, which works out great. So you end up getting a return on some money. So if you have any questions or you need anything from me, let me know down below. Um, I did my best. I know the video is a little choppy, but I was just trying to make sure I can get everything for you guys in these certain videos. And as always, I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. You guys stay safe out there.